What's up guys, this is RG giving you another High Dimension broadcast. As you can see, we're here on Unison League and this is the eve of the big uh, ranked guild battles update. So I want to give you guys a head start on what you guys should be preparing for as uh, in terms of builds for your characters um, in this upcoming PvP uh, ranked guild battles season. So it's going to be for a week though, so I guess it's just a week. <laughs> so. Let's go ahead and get started guys. This is going to be a long video uh, and I will put um, in the description the timings on each class. I'm just going to go through all the classes in, in one video. So, um, you know, it's just, it would, or else it would have been five videos. So, I'll do that now and then maybe I'll break up the uh, videos into separate classes like uh, later. But for now, we're just going to be into one video. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the archer class um, this is my most familiar class um, so that's why I'm gonna start with it right now um, so first of all let's go ahead and talk about the skills you want to bring to uh, GVG first thing you guys want to bring is uh, obviously uh, high circle snipe and then lethal strikes um, and then if you're depending on what you are if you're frontline you definitely want to bring cheer and then if you uh, uh, as well as your front line you can bring ether exchange or you can switch ether exchange with guard uh, those are the options for you uh, at this point um, let me just go ahead and switch to that set so um, in this set you kinda are focused in on killing the crystal switching in and switching out um, when your players die killing off players and then just bursting down the crystal this is just called the CB or crystal breaker or crystal buster whatever you guys want to call it uh, spec archer which is really really uh, high damage and it's really good um, and then that's pretty much the skills that you would go with you can switch off uh, this for uh, guard right here so between uh, guard and EE or you can also uh, some people actually like to have like imaginary shot in there as well like this uh, and that's if you have like uh, more than one fatal bow you can do that uh, I wouldn't suggest it if you just have one or less fatal bows um, but you can you can also do that and then some people do this wind of courage here um, like a lot of times you'll have five archers in the back and you can switch out the five archers with the front line wind of courage on the uh, crystal and kill it that's how a lot of top guilds do it it does require a lot of timing as well as uh, precision but um, you know if you stall and then your archers come in and, and all wind of courage uh, four of them at least wind of courage and then do that you can um, you can kill the crystal pretty easily you can also switch out cheer in that sense if they all have uh, Wind of Courage, and you guys are really, really good on timings, and your front line is also very good. You can actually uh, switch out Cheer and put in Ether Exchange here. So there's a bunch of different specs you can go, but definitely want to keep on this High Circle Snipe and Lethal Strikes, as well as you can put Wind of Courage and Ether Exchange, and like I said, you can switch uh, between those. Um, as far as the proficiency goes, you definitely want to stay um, in the archer you want to go ahead and make sure you get the sorry not that but um, you, you definitely want to get the uh, damage against lancers you want to go ahead oh that's not it uh, this is the actual tree I'm supposed to be looking at you definitely want to get the um, yes attack bow, bow and gun all this yes you want to get the magic attack all of it um, basically you want to go all the way down into here into wind of courage and get this and you also want to go ahead and get this cost up you don't really need this um, Burke's snipe at all and then you actually don't need the magic defense boost so pretty much what I've gotten so far is what you probably should get as the archer then you, you don't really need this you can move on um, after you've done this you want to go ahead and get into your lancer and your uh, your mage shared traits. So once you've d once you've completed what I've completed on the archer, you want to go ahead and get this uh, lancer shared trait all the way up to here. Doesn't really matter where you go right or left. And then you want to get your mage right here, which I've gotten so far. So I still need to get the lancer. So I'm still kind of behind on that. 
Um, so that's what you want to get. As far as your gear goes, guys, you want to have um, at least four uh, Heart of the Dead Eyes, I would suggest. And then you can go to uh, Fatal, or you can go one Fatal, five. That's what I'm actually running right now, is one Fatal, five Dead Eye. And I actually count this Archer as a Dead Eye because that's what it procs. So, yeah. Uh, and then, by the way, just, just FYI, the actual um, uh, Drake. This kind of bow right here, uh, what is it called? Sorry, um, bow gun of Aquir or Aquar, whatever it is, the blue one is uh, higher damage than this one, even though it's 24 cost and 24 cost. As you can see, this one is plus six and plus seven. There's not going to be a 200 gap in attack just from those pluses, and obviously, this one's plus seven, this one's plus six, so. Um, you can see that there's like a 200 damage gap in between the damage on top and there's also a damage gap between the uh, magic attack. So just FYI, this blue bow is better than this red bow. Um, also, uh, as far as your armors and helmets go, some people suggest going like Fatal Testament into your armors and helmets. Um, you can also do that if you have them. I don't have any fatal, uh, fatal on my armors and helmets. The difference between Fatal XL and Fatal M, I believe, is just the proc chance. It's still going to just crit. Uh, all your all your stuff is going to crit. So Fatal M and Fatal XL, it uh, doesn't really matter which one you have there um, on your armors here, uh, as long as you have you know a proc on your armor. So I don't have any of those armors unfortunately but if you do have those armors that have fatal on them you can put those on because it doesn't really matter if you're just doing crystal breaker uh, what kind of armors and helmets you have. As far as the monsters go uh, you want to have six monsters and six um, weapons and if possible you would like to have uh, like five Alice's and one Shinitobe or just six Alice's. Um, as you don't, if uh, if you're going to be a Crystal Breaker team, you uh, most of the time won't be in for Unison. However, sometimes you are pushed to do Unison. So I would suggest if you're going to be a Crystal Breaking Archer, like have one Shinitobe or like one Fire Valk or one like um, not Water Valk but uh, like Absaris. Something that's going to do damage. Um, and then also that you can throw up, uh, like say they can buff like this Shinitobe or something like that if you're gonna go uh, crit or something. Um, but in all, in all, um, like if every if everything is perfect in your guild where you're like it's just situations down where everything's going perfectly uh, and you guys have good swaps and everything, then you can just go six Alice um, or a combination of uh, six Greens going 198 across the board. Um, and then you'll just do you're basically just trying to max out your damage that way um if you're trying to go like a tankier archer or something like this then you definitely if you're like a frontline archer like where you're you're part of the front line and you want to stay alive you definitely want to switch up um some put some armors on and then you can take out some of your um your monster uh you want to go ahead and get some more your armor procs in and forget about the fatal test um, on your armors if you are trying to go more tanky and then also I would suggest taking out like an Alice and putting in like say an Apollo like put on a 198 Apollo uh, a 198 Alice and then a 198 Obseris so that you can have counters for um, the damage out there um, as well as putting like say something like a garden would be nice uh, for that like something like this uh, and then you definitely if you're frontline uh, you would want cheer. So something like this would be nice for a frontline archer. Uh, okay. So that is pretty much where you want to be at, guys, in terms of archer. Um, I think I got all the points settled uh, and everything I needed to do for that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch uh, classes. If you have any questions, you can put it in the comments below as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and switch the class now to soldier. And I haven't done a soldier uh, guide ever, so or I did actually, but I haven't done a cleric guide is what I meant to say. So okay, the soldier guide. Um, soldiers actually have incredibly high DPS if you have them spec correctly. Uh, a lot of games are like this. Um, if you have uh, a warrior class or, something, or a certain class, it will have to be incredibly highly geared, but it can also become the strongest character in the game. Um, just because of actually uh, 
this skill right here is actually gonna give you attack and defense stats um, so it depends on what your attack and defense is uh, the ability power of this skill um, and just because of this skill is why the warrior or the general is super super good right now um, the way that you would actually make him good is you can go ahead and use this uh, dual sword and then I would suggest going uh, into charisma and cheer and then um, you, the, the fourth skill is kind of a throw up skill you can go into like a guard uh, if you want to do like a little bit more uh, more defense or you can go into like a like a buff for yourself if you want or you can go into like more damage like uh, not vanquish but um, divine smash so uh, I would definitely suggest that like charisma cheer and then the uh, the dual sword divine smash you can do something like that that would be pretty awesome um, and and the way this uh, spec works is you actually go into your gears here you get six of these uh, weapons you go ahead and get um, you can go six monsters uh, and then you could go uh, all your helms and armors will be the Apollo armor so basically what you want to do is you want to fill up your swords here with uh, fatal test and physical test however much uh, you can get of the fatal test would be great because you can also get physical test from your helmet and armor so if you put in a fatal test in here you could put if you if you wanted to you could put like five or six if you wanted to um, but like say four fatal test swords as well as two physical test swords here and then two Apollo helmets here and then as well as two Apollo uh, armors here and then you would go into six Apollos here now the reason um, you Apollo is so good for this is because he's a fire monster he's gonna give you attack and uh, physical defense and that's what the skill that we were talking about earlier actually um, works with which is the dual strike or whatever double strike uh, and that's how warriors are able to get like incredibly high damage with that um, and you can fool around with the skills but basically all you're going to be doing uh, is you can be a crystal break soldier and just do incredibly high damage with those skills as well as having incredibly high defense right because you're going to have all apollos right so um, you can still be very effective on a front line as long as you don't just get uh, killed by a mage because I mean, honestly even though you have high magic defense if your uh, magic procs don't go off you're gonna die to a mage anyways because he's just gonna proc you with his meteors and you're just gonna die because he has the AP in increase on you so uh, he could be effective in uh, crystal break sense and on front line so you don't have to swap him out and that's why he's so powerful is because um, you can have so much damage on this uh, this double uh, this dual sword that uh, you can be crystal break and he can be frontlining killing archers in one hit because remember guys the uh, soldier is meant to kill archers uh, is the anti archer here so uh, yeah that's pretty much the DPS build for the for the general um, you definitely want to uh, go ahead and get as many fatal test swords and then those physical test swords to fill that out and then the the Apollo armors and helmets to fill the rest of your armors and helms and then Apollo across the board so six Apollos will be good um, all right so that's that uh, as far as the defense general goes I would suggest exactly this build uh, go ahead and go charisma go um, cheer then you would want to get um, you could you can actually you could go on a, uh, a heal spec and then get a guard so um, that that's one thing and or you can go guard and you can go heaven's breath so the reason for this spec is basically to be able to tank a uh, full unison and then get your adversaries off that's really the only way I see this spec really being useful is uh, taking off the buffs of the enemy team so basically what you would want to do is you would cheer up your team all the way uh, as well as using your charisma uh, as a frontline um, paladin and then when they actually uh, when they actually unison versus you you still have enough uh, HP because you've already popped your heaven's breath to uh, survive the full unison and then 
use your Abseris to cancel off all their buffs. So that's pretty much the only way you can do that um, successfully in my opinion. I don't think that um, like a tank paladin is that useful unless he has Abseris. Uh, he could be semi useful, but it's not it's not very like good unless he has the ability to tank a full unison and then cancel the buffs on another team. You can also use um you know uh, a dark falcon now to cancel the unison, but again the Avsaris is better just because it has more defenses on it uh, innately, um, and the uh, paladin itself doesn't use magic attack. But I guess that wouldn't really matter too much, but I guess the um, what it would really matter is just having no um, physical defense on the actual monster itself. But the the actual effect of the monster and the skill would, would be the same pretty much. It would just buff your team as well as take the buffs off the other team. So that is that as well as the gear for the paladin. You would just want to, um, the tank paladin, obviously you would want to stack up on your armors and your um, your monsters and then for the for the rest of the, your points like say you had like 50 points in your weapons you could just use two weapons that have um, heaven's breath on them that would be cool because then if you proc the heaven's breath you can actually uh, proc up to like I think it's like a almost a hundred percent more HP um, so that would be good for for a tanky paladin like that's purely tanking and just cheering basically you're just going to be cheering for unison and then tanking and then waiting for the Epsaris to come out so that you can wipe buffs um so yeah armors and then put your monsters in um accordingly you definitely want to have counter unisons in there and then an Epsaris so anything that's going to counter the other person's unison as well as um the Epsaris if you just want to purely go into uh, a buff wiping paladin build all right i think that's about it for that one i want to go ahead and get into the next class now let's talk about lancers so lancers in this meta are uh most of them are are going to be the front line semi-tanky high damage uh, lancers that are taking out mages and um, basically just being able to attack faster than anybody else so you can take out archers and mages with these lancers um, they're a little bit tanky so that uh, they sometimes don't die to one lethal however if you do proc two dead eyes and they all hit pretty much any lancer is gonna just die but um, but as far as lancers go um, you can you can go a semi tanky lancer and then go front line with him or you can go a glass lancer and go full damage so those are the two options you have um, for the semi tanky lancer and the glass lancer most of the time the abilities are going to stay similar uh, you want to go with um, let's see I think I have uh, some of the abilities you want to go with uh, sting savage sting uh, Night Splits and Cheer, or you can go uh, Savage Sting, Night Splits, Ether Exchange, and Cheer, or you can uh, also go uh, Ether Exchange, Night Splits, Savage Sting, and then Guard here, or you can switch out your Ether Exchange for Guard and keep Cheer. But I would definitely go ahead and keep the Savage Sting and Night Splits. Just because Savage Sting and Night Splits are, are a good combo together. Savage Sting is going to give you the break that you need on certain targets. Uh, the Night Splits is going to give you that one hit KO for mages and people that are like archers last hitting. Um, but I do, I, honestly I think the best um, build just for Lancer for right now is this one right here. Savage Sting, Night Splits, Ether Exchange, Cheer. I think it's just something that... Um, kind of is a really good for it's good for crystal damage if you have to have the lancer in like if the lancer got the buffs then you definitely want to keep him in and attack the crystal or if the the lancer is in front line you can just pop your ether exchange instantly then night split somebody in the face and then also follow up with a savage sting or you can you know ether exchange savage sting night splits um right after each other um and then just hold your cheer for after you're done with that so if like boom 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 and then you're you're done with your rotation um 
you definitely want to stay in after that because they're probably going to target you or if they don't target you you might get your unison soon or you might have killed three people and you know your unison is almost up uh, you can push the phase do a little bit of damage and then counter unison after the uh the phase um so that's what i would suggest for this build guys and then uh, obviously if you want to go as as um as a glass lancer you want to go six weapons six armors i'll be sorry six weapons six uh monsters and you want to just put in as much pump as much attack as you possibly can if you can get um a bunch of apollos that would be nice um and then if you want to balance out the magic defense you can say get like four apollos and then like heck heka and then the um or you know what it would be better if you actually had three apollos and then three of those healing girls because you can get good amount of magic defense and defense from those and you get a good amount of attack from both of those um but as a frontline lancer you definitely want to go with um like one Avsaris, one apollo and then uh one alice so Avsaris, apollo and alice those are the three things that you need on a frontline lancer just because um it's going to be help you out with those counters that you're going to encounter um you have to have those three things like a fire a green and a water just because if you're going to be front line you're going to have unison most of the time so you're going to be in for a unison battle a lot um if you're you know dps are in there and you just went phase you're probably not going to be unison battling against another team anyways so you want to as a frontliner it's kind of like the you know consensus that you should have one of each type of monster they should be 198 and preferably it would be apollo alice uh or argo and uh Avceris. so though it would be nice that would be a nice uh, front lining spec um as far as the uh f the front line um lances go i still would suggest six lances um but if, if you are a frontliner, you don't specifically have to have six monsters. Um, if you're frontlining, you can go with four monsters and then go with some the rest into armors. Four monsters, the rest armors, six weapon. That would be fine. But if you're not going frontline, I would definitely... If you're trying to be straight up Crystal Burst uh, Lancer, which I wouldn't... Honestly, I wouldn't uh, suggest just because archers are better at that. But if you want to do that, you want to go with just full attack on everything. And then you can also do the Apollo thing where you can put Apollos in your uh, helmets and weapons. Apollo helmets and uh, armor, sorry. In your, into your helmet and armor slot. And then you would just go full out lances. And you would just try to get as many uh, lances that are either physical testament or also coincide with your night splits and savage thing. Probably physical, uh, all physical test lances would be nice, just because they go with both of these skills and having six procs is better than three and three. But it's up to you, you know, uh, if you don't have that, then you don't have it. But yeah, just try to go for these two. That would be nice. Okay, let's go ahead and get on to the next class, guys. Uh, the mage class. I think I covered everything from that, yeah. Oh, uh, hmm. I have to go back because the soldier i didn't even talk about what they should get with uh the soldier class what they should get first so uh as a soldier soldier you obviously want to go ahead and get lancer first um right here the uh attack per uh, percent if you're going uh, crystal burst soldier or high damage soldier you can go ahead and get the um the attack boost first and then you can go into your defense um, you know if you want to you can get this first and then go into attack or you can go to the attack and then go into the defense so whichever one is better for you that'll work that will work just fine and then you can go into uh, your archers after that you don't need mage you don't need cleric too much as a uh, high damage shoulder but if you want to you could afterwards obviously um, as a tank soldier you want to go ahead and get the defense um, 7% and then you can go ahead and get the archer uh, magic boost 7%, 7%. so that will be the, 
the way to go for a tanky soldier. And then after that, you want to go with Lancer. All right. And then for the Lancer, let's talk about what they would get first. Obviously, you would want to get your 7% of, of your Lancer tree first. This right here, 7% attack. Then you would want to go ahead and get into your Soldier and then into your Archer after that. So you can go either way. Um, you might want to go into your Archer first just because you, you could get this Wind of Courage buff which is pretty awesome to use as a, a Archer and you might want to switch to Archer sometime. And um, you know Soldier or it could be reversed so, you know if you have a bunch of Soldier uh, Swords like Fatal Test Swords you, you, you go into this way first. So it doesn't really matter which way you go to just depends on what you pref your preference is. But yeah as Archer go ahead and get this. And then soldier or marksman, depending. Then afterwards, you guys can get these ones if you feel like it. All right, guys. Uh, next class I want to talk about is the mage. So let's go ahead and get into the mage. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this. So meteor rain. This is a skill that's just going to be very very useful as uh, your wizard you want to go ahead and pop that um, with your ether exchange as well as having another meteor on hand and then if you want you can go skewered as well as your uh, photon crush um, if you like single eagle target so the abilities are going to look something in this category you would want to go ahead and uh, keep your um, you don't you really don't need cheer too much if you're just going to be swapping in and out and mages are best at swapping in and out so you want to go ahead and put your meteor rain on oh sorry let me go ahead and put this class back in all right so let's go ahead and put that in there meteor rain so meteor rain meteor strike Ether exchange, and then if you want to put skewered, if you have like all, uh, all, um, not meteor, but if you have all magic testament, then this is an awesome, awesome spec right here for you. Your meteor is going to do high damage, your meteor rain is going to do high damage, your skewer is going to do high damage. Um, if you don't have any, um, magic testament, and say if you have, you just have like, uh, meteor strike. Um, I wouldn't suggest going Meteor Rain if you don't have any Magic Testament. And if you just have Meteor Strike um, and like say Photons, you would just want to go ahead and just do that. Like so, you would go something like this if you wanted to uh, do Photons. But um, the reason I uh, suggested Skewered is basically um, is basically just the damage output within the time frame. So. <clears throat> A lot of people are saying, oh yeah, like y your Photon Strike is going to do more damage because it's 6 um, cooldown and this one is 12 cooldown, but you're not thinking really of um, how much damage it can do just by using the one skill. So basically, um, it's going to do damage, way more damage burst as, the, as uh, this skill is because it has no chance to miss or anything like that. So 9, 18, it's 18 ability power and then this one is... Uh, or sorry, one, <clears throat> 180, this is 120. So a lot of the times you're left uh, with like this much HP and then the, the healer heals you back up, right? Um, just think about that like situation where you're using skewered, you're, you're using uh, 15 cost, right? But it's just that damage for that time frame is what it, it makes it really good. Um, just like how Meteor Strike is really good because it's hitting you a bunch of times, uh, the attacks are doubled up, and then um, you're doing high damage at once, right? It's not just, oh, you're doing damage and then consistent damage is, is different than burst damage. So obviously you want burst damage as a mage, especially if you're uh, a mage that is coming in from the bench, which is I which I suggest with this strategy. So skewered, really, really good skill if you have the procs for it. If you don't have the procs for it, then go with photon strike uh, or photon crush and then that. Uh, but again, I would suggest um, this spec right here if you have a bunch of magic testament um, 
I would definitely suggest this spec. It's really, really good. Uh, just hopping, hopping in, popping all your cooldowns, and then hopping out, or hopping in, popping all your cooldowns, and then popping your ether exchange so that you're able to get some damage off on the crystal, or su and switch out, or this and that. So basically, a switch in mage. I think that's the best way to go. Um, always switching in to do damage. Um, <clears throat> as far as um, uh, what you want on your gear as a mage, you definitely want to go with a magical test as much as you possibly can. Uh, magical testament all the way. If you can get uh, the XXLs, obviously you want to do that. Um, if you can get magic tests all the way across the board, you, you do you do want to do that. And then you could um, <clears throat> put Nyx armors in if you'd like, but uh, the mage is actually semi tanky. So, uh, you know, there, there's a, also a possibility where you can go s semi tanky mage, put six uh, of these in, put like say three or four um, uh, monsters, and then go into the rest armors if you want to go like semi tanky. My suggestion would just to be uh, split up your, put, put all uh, <clears throat> magical test weapons in, and then the rest here would be six. Um, monsters you're probably going to be a switching in mage but if you de decide on going frontline again anybody on frontline i would suggest having three of each element oh sorry one of each element of the three um battling elements which is the green red and blue and then the rest uh the other three should be split up between dark and light depending on what armors you guys had because you would want to uh, just basically have your stats uh higher that way also um having lancers uh hit you is a big thing so you, you might want to lean a little bit more onto the defense than uh, magic defense uh, as also you have magic defense coming off of your your spec right so you just want to lean a little bit higher onto the defense innately on your gear rather than having more magic defense because a lot of times you're going to die from lancers um but also you die from archers, but lancers are the ones who have the ability power boost against you. So, I think, yes, uh, let me go ahead and get the ability, the proficiency done with this class. So the first thing you obviously want to do as mage is go ahead and get into the magic boost level 4. Increasing your magic attack by 7%. That is the most important thing. Uh, and similarly to the lancer, you do not need to have um, a specific stat so you do not have to on the lancer you don't need attack and on uh, on the lancer you don't need magic attack and on the mage you don't need attack so you don't need to go into the lancer tree um, all the way here you want to go ahead and get the mage tree first and then you go ahead and get the soldier tree first just because you want that extra defense against those lancers and then you go into the Archer tree second just because you want to get that magic defense boost, okay? So that's what you do in that tree. And last but not least, finally, we're going to be doing the cleric tutorial or the cleric uh, one. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Alright, so cleric. I am currently... A cleric yes all right so let's go ahead and check out what I have here um, first thing you want to do on the cleric is uh, get a good amount of um, recovery abilities uh, you definitely want to put dignity on your bar once you get dignity um, I don't have it at the moment but yes dignity is going to be one of those things that's incredibly good uh, blah, 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 blah. This one right here so it, it heals all of your allies right that's just like really really good skill because a lot of the times your allies are in groups that are being attacked but one's on the top and then one's on the bottom uh you know one could be in the middle so you can only heal two of them at a time if you're using a three area heal but if you're using dignity you can pop that and everyone's getting healed it's a very useful uh skill just because uh it heals everyone now if <clears throat> say um, you're in a crystal uh, assault and then you didn't kill the crystal and then you're going back into the the uh, front line and 
they are you, they're going to use an attack against your your players, but you don't know who they're going to attack at the beginning very beginning of the round. You know they're going to attack because you see two archers step forward, right? If you pop the dignity, you can get whoever is getting attacked up. Doesn't matter if he's on the other side or whatever. You're just gonna pop it, and you see like three people coming forward. Obviously, they're gonna attack your characters, right? So you don't know what's gonna uh, go down. You can pop your dignity, and sometimes it'll it'll help out all the players. Obviously, if three archers are attacking one guy, he's probably gonna die unless he uses guard or his all of his armor stuff rocked. But um, it will help you out a lot on pre-healing. <clears throat> That's one thing that you wanna uh, um, kind of concern yourself with a healer is pre-healing targets um, and a lot of healers like to take uh, like to take heal into he into the uh, rotation because if you have a bunch of like say heart of health um, and you have like heart of recoveries and a bunch of different things your heals aren't going to be too much of a problem because you're going to be proccing like a lot so the heal AP isn't going to be too too crazy with that. So definitely want to go ahead and take dignity, guys. That's one thing you definitely want. Um, you can take an area heal here, a heal here, a dignity, and like an ether exchange. So you can do that, um, as well as so like an. Uh, you can also have cheer here. Let's say ether exchange. So you can have something that's like this, but with a, a dig. Uh, you know, obviously, actually, you kind of don't want to have ether exchange and cheer. You kind of want to run at least three heals, just because as a healer you're gonna run out of cooldowns a lot, and you're gonna want to put on heals. So like area heal and heal are good. Uh, a lot of people don't use like like confuses and like mages don't use mind trick a lot or can concentrate mind trick because it just takes too long. But um, like you definitely want to run area heals, and then you can run like say a recover here. That would be nice. Um, instead of this area heal, you can run a dignity here, uh, and then instead of the cheer, you can also run like a ether exchange. But it, it really depends on what your playstyle is and what your guild's playstyle is. Um, but having uh, area heals is is useful. Uh, as well as having like a low cooldown heal, it's very useful. Um, I've healed before, and having those cooldown, low cooldown heals with high, uh, not proc rate, but uh, animation speed are really good. Because you know, like the heal and area heal, the animation speed is really fast, so um, you can use that. Um, the recover here can be replaced with a dignity, so you just have three uh, area heals, and then you have your your ether exchange. So basically, you're just ether exchanging and then you can area heal your team uh, say like two lances are next to you you area heal uh, that after you ether exchange all three of you have ether exchanged you put your area heal up and then you kill off a bunch of their teams there's a basically it depends on what strategy you're running uh, and then you can decide what you want to go uh, based on that I wouldn't suggest like a guard really on this um, cleric most of the time they're not going to be uh, attacking your character, but um, you could go a guard spec if you have like an Avsaris and you're trying to do like almost like a, a uh, what it what a, a paladin would do. I wouldn't suggest it though, because only against weak weaker teams that'll work. Because most of the time, um, it's it's just not going to work because you're, you're going to die. You don't have like the heaven's breath and everything on, so that's why I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest it. Um, so you just basically run the heals that you're comfortable using with your team. Uh, you can uh, like I like specifically for me running area heals, uh, or you can run a dignity, and then a, a fast heal like a this one right here. It's um, low cooldown, low cost. It's gonna proc, and it's a high animation. So just you running a heal, area heal, and then whatever you want in this last slot. I would suggest that right there. You know, greater healing would be nice. Uh, dignity. So. You do that some um, people run judgment so it's really hit or miss uh, on this judgment basically uh, running this judgment um, if they know you're a healer that runs judgment they can just all focus you on the uh, unison attack and then if they kill you before your judgment goes off then you're just gonna go 4v5 
Uh, however, if, if your judgment procs, it's going to be really good for your team. So it's really a, it's like a hit or miss if your uh, whether judgment is good or not. Because um, you can run this judgment spec like this, and sometimes it pays off like really really big, and sometimes it's just a total fail, and you're like, um, it's like really unreliable. Uh, the only reason you run judgment is to for the inhibit um, inhibits unison. But if they're like say you guys don't have unison and and you're just trying to spam them like this and they all have unison they're just gonna instantly unison unless they're bad they'll just instantly unison and then you're just gonna die anyways uh, and your judgment's not gonna do anything so that's pretty much how that'll play out um, so you you ha it's up to you if you would if you want to run judgment I've seen it used uh, well at certain times and then I've also seen it used poorly so if you have really good execution and uh, battle um, tactics as well as uh, you know what's going on uh, when like awareness battle awareness then you can use this judgment if you like uh, I'll leave that up to your judgment <laughs> no, I was kidding but um, but yeah I wouldn't suggest area cure this is probably one of the worst skills in the game um, probably the worst skill in the game just because uh, as you can see on the cleric look at this area cure versus air recovery the recovery has 20 cooldown this is 22 cooldown the cost is 16 this is cost 20 and this one also removes status ailments this does not so this is pretty much the throwaway skill why would you ever ever have this skill unless you don't have this skill uh, and why would you ever use this skill because it's such a long cooldown it's just it's a complete waste of a skill unless like you're using it as a paladin or something um, maybe but I wouldn't suggest it um, yeah so that's pretty much a long rundown of the the skills for the priest because there there's so many different options you can go uh, as far as the gear you definitely want to go and have as many of these healing books as possible I would say if you can get at least four heart of health you can stick at four books if you want and then the rest should be going into armors helmets and then um, uh, monsters distributed evenly as a healer you definitely definitely want to have those three uh, counter unisons you want to have one of each type basically you want to have one uh, water which is going to be the best one would be Absaris uh, the best uh, fire you can use would be a um, Apollo and the best um, green is is probably Alice just because Argo he misses a lot and I kind of am regretting uh, putting 198 into Argo immediately before going to check how much actually percentage attacks he does sometimes he's incredibly good and you're like oh he hit like four attacks like he just got super owned but um sometimes it's like why did he only hit one attack so I think they should cap it at he only misses he, he hits two out of the five at least uh, because that is already less damage than Alice right so but then again it's like a super RNG if he like hits all six attacks it's like everyone's dead from one so that would be nice if he had all six attacks every time but <laughs> No. Okay, so back to my point after that tangent. Uh, go those three counters and then go Nyx and Amma, or you can go uh, two other uh, elements like, uh, you know, obviously um, you want to go, not two other elements, two other monsters that are dark and light. Uh, that would be good. Just because if um, if you need to, you can pop like a, an Amma or a Nyx if if the situation arises where you're the only one getting damaged the whole time and you pop your unison and like say uh, there's a situation where you can neg negate their attack or use an ammo to stop their damage and then heal everybody back up something like that but um, in in like the high level play I wouldn't suggest doing something like that unless you're like incredibly adept uh, at how like the unisons are gained on the other side as well as the battle uh, awareness like if you're really good at battle awareness you can start popping unisons at different times but most of the time you want to pop your unison all together or with your team uh, before just just popping it randomly so that is how you want to play it guys um, I think 
uh, as the healer, let's go ahead and get back into the proficiency there. I'm losing my voice. Sorry about it, guys. <clears throat> it's a long video. So, the healer itself, you want to... I honestly wouldn't even really get this unless you're like incredibly high on pve because f uh four four thousand is a really high number for proficiency points i would honestly go in uh, get your dignity and then let me see what is this uh nope you don't need that book and relic gear percent no nope, you don't need that don't really need that uh, nope. So you can just go all the way down to Dignity here on the left side and then stop there. Just because most of the stuff you're getting your um, your boost and healing from is just going to be your procs. You don't honestly need these. You don't need those too much. You can, you could get them. I don't. You don't really, really need it. But what you really do need is the Soldier Defensive Boost and the lancer oh sorry not the lancer the soldier defensive boost and the archer magic defense boost those are the things that you need uh on your front line and then afterwards you can get your uh your uh lancer and your mage just for the um the monster buffs you know like the share chase for the monsters when you throw them up in unison that would be good uh, or just basically the monster attack stats um you know the stats for the mage and the lancer are gonna boost your your percent there so those are all good uh yeah so i think that's about it guys i hope this helped you guys out a lot um you can just skip through the video i'll put like timers down on the video about where your classes are but uh as for right now i just wanted to push this video out just be right before the patch hits um because a lot of people have been asking for me to update it and uh i know it was really rushed and everything so i didn't really uh give it a huge amount of uh time here but i i do want to uh help you guys out as much as i can and uh, i'll break it up into uh sections later uh or i'll put up little little videos on it later uh where it's breaking it up but for now i'll just put the timers down there so I hope this helps you out a lot guys. If I missed anything, definitely put it in the comments below. Tell me what I th uh, you thought about the video, as well as give me the thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't like. Um, also, I hope you guys have a good uh, rank guild battle session, um, and I hope to see some of you guys in the battles. That'll be pretty fun. Um, so definitely hit me up, and uh, also if you could subscribe, that would be great. If you would like to donate, go ahead and hit the donate in the bottom uh, of the description. As always, thank you all for watching, and take it easy. Peace.